MAGA writer and attorney uh, William Calhoun is being released on bail before his trial for being involved in the January 6th Capitol riots. Uh, so now he told uh, U.S. District Judge Dabney Friedrich that, quote, if I had to do it over again, I would not have gone into the Capitol. Oh, well, uh, hey, look at that. Uh, there's more. He says, I know that I messed up doing that. I apologize for being difficult. Difficult's probably not the word that I would use. <laughs> uh, but uh, look at that. Uh, we got a mea culpa, right? Oh, man. I'm so sorry. I'm so I'm sorry. Uh, boy, I, that was uh, that was some that was some bad decision making on my part. Mm, mm. OK, uh, well, look, uh, we'll we'll see how sorry he actually is when we get into uh, things that he've said before. Uh, but all right. The news is on this, though, that the judge ultimately okayed Calhoun's bail request. Now, previously, a previous judge has actually had actually denied it before. Uh, and so there was an appeal. He went before a different judge, and the judge says, well, you know, yeah, okay, uh, we, we will allow your uh, bail request. Well, oh, all right. So now this happened to be over the objections of, of, of course, federal prosecutors. Calhoun was branded bail with relatively lax conditions. After the government pushed for Internet monitoring provisions, the defense pleaded that such a regime would not be conducive to attorney-client privilege. So... Uh, so they can't monitor the websites that he goes to. Mm, okay. Uh, that request, of course, then transformed into a proposal that Calhoun steered clear of all social media, that he even refrained from reading the news. Now, uh, that seems like an odd request. But then, of course, then you realize that a lot of the news or so-called news that this man uh, was inevitably, you know, uh, exposed to was part of his radicalization. So, for example, you know, you, you watch Fox News, you watch Newsmax, you're going to be fed a steady stream of, oh, it's the Democrats, uh, the, the Democrats, uh, they, they, they uh, rigged the election, uh, they got illegals voting, uh, they're pouring over the border, they're, they're busting them into the polling sites, and that's what happened, uh, and Biden rigged the election against Donald Trump, and so really, in reality, Donald Trump uh, is the real president of the United States. Well, none of that's actually true. So barring him from, you know, watching those news sites and what they're saying and, and defending of the big lie, I guess it kind of makes sense in that case. All right. Uh, nonetheless, no, 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 we're not going to do that. Uh, you're allowed to watch the news. In fact, uh, according to the inner city press, Calhoun protested that sites like YouTube, uh, he should be able to go on to YouTube uh, because they contain how-to videos. How-to videos. You know, how to be a white nationalist. How to do sedition. Those videos. Because, look, uh, we know what videos he's watching, and, and we also know that the algorithm, uh, the algorithm, rhythm, right, uh, pushes people into, or at least has traditionally pushed people uh, further and further further into conspiracy, propaganda, uh, and, and radicalization, okay? Uh, because of the high prevalence of that on the right wing and the, the algorithm responding to that. Uh, and, you know, again, it, there, there's been studies where people would, you know, watch one YouTube video, a couple of YouTube videos on, on something that's random, and suddenly you're like on Alex Jones, <laughs> Uh, and they're like, oh, oh my God, what, what is this? What is this deep state? Why are the frogs turning gay? And, and so, you know, it's 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 one of those things where it's like uh, YouTube also with some of the people is the, the, the you know, the uh, radicalization. And, and it's like a big problem here. All right. And so, yes, we know the videos that he was watching part of why he was there in the first place. And the other part, of course, is Donald Trump, the, the president of the United States and, and congressman that were, again, spreading these uh, conspiracy theories about the uh, election. Uh, and so he went from, by the way, this, this man went from a Democratic voter to a full-on MAGA shot. Uh, and so that's really quite a, quite a de-evolution there 
Uh, and again, it involves being sucked down the uh, the, the, the alt-right uh, pipeline, which unfortunately has, you know, affected a lot of people. Uh, and so nonetheless, the court and the defense uh, ended up settling on basically a social media posting ban. So now Calhoun will not be have his uh, Internet monitored uh, and he is not barred from visiting any websites. Uh, he just is unable to make public posts. Uh, and as you're going to see, some of the posts that he had made, especially on Parlay, uh, were a little spicy. Uh, and so it is kind of interesting. Uh, now, unfortunately, of course, uh, he can continue to consume the kind, uh, kind of media that led him to be at the Capitol building in the first place. Right. Because, you know, nothing bad will happen. But, but, but I understand that, like, Oh, of course, uh, that, that's just his, he, you know, uh, he feels real sorry about that. And, yet, you know, he he promises not to do a treason again. Mm, mm, mm. Uh, so you might be wondering, OK, why did this, why did he get such a lenient thing? I mean, like Chansley, for example, a QAnon shaman. Um, I mean, he got denied bail. Oh, what's what's going on? Well, apparently, Judge Friedrich agreed with the defense's earlier contention that words do not equal action. And so since he didn't actually physically participate in any of the violence himself, uh, but was just only there to intimidate lawmakers into overthrowing a, a lawful election, he didn't actually do anything wrong other than just be there. Ah, right. Noting Calhoun's lack of charges for actually having engaged in violence and his familiarity with court orders, Due to his years as an attorney, the court signed off on its release uh, with GPS monitoring. Uh, now, the judge said that words, uh, words don't equal action, right? Uh, okay, well, let, let's let's have an examination of some of the words uh, that Calhoun uh, had been saying to his MAGA friends. And, and we'll see whether or not, you know, um, these words might, might be of some concern. Uh, and why, of course... He was denied bail uh, in the first place. Because, again, this is the second court uh, appearance, with, with this time with a different judge, uh, in order to figure out whether he or not he could uh, get pretrial bail. So now, in one post, and, and, and this is a, it appears that it's full of tough talk, all right? Uh, now, one post from his late January initial appearance, Calhoun wrote of his desire to place Black Lives Matter protesters in body bags, said saying that he wanted to uh, he wanted racial justice advocates stacked up high standing by and when Trump makes the call many heavily armed patriots will deal with the Chicom Democrats another post said mm. uh, also adding oh yeah the police and military they're on our side so obviously uh you know they're they're on our side yeah obviously Antifa clearly Antifa right uh, Antifa <laughs> um, Calvin also uh, repeatedly expressed his desire for, quote, violent retribution against the media and the Democrats uh, and told one BLM supporter on Twitter that they, quote, won't be laughing when patriots go door to door executing you commies. Another post, Calhoun promised headshots for certain members of the media who uh, had been poking a little bit of fun at uh, Tiffany Trump. Oh, well, you know, how chivalrous of you. You're, you're protecting the uh, honor of integrity of the, the wonderful Tiffany Trump. Also, he wrote in another post, God is on Trump's side. God is not on the Democrat side. And if patriots have to kill 60 million of these communists, holy shit, that ex escalated quickly. Uh, it is God's will. Think ethnic cleansing, but it's anti-communist cleansing. So, oh, all right. Um, seems a little extreme. Tiny bit. Uh, and you know, it's funny. Not to go tanky here. Um, isn't one of the main talking points that the conservatives like to use against communism uh, is that, man, communism killed so many people. That's why we can't have it. Okay. Um, I find that ironic. Again, it, I, I'm not I'm not tanky or anything, uh, but I just I just find that super ironic where he's like, where they're like, oh, communism kills. That's why we need to murder the communists. 
But but, but wait, and, and here's the thing. You're not really going to find a, a lot of communists in the Democratic Party. <laughs> right? Um, the Democratic Party is nowhere near communist. Uh, the most left that we have in the Democratic Party is is actually the sock Dems. Yeah, you know, a smattering of socialists. Uh, I know there's some tankies online. Um, but, like, generally, the, the most left that we have inside of power structures uh, in the Democratic Party is, is essentially capitalist social democrats who want you know a nordic style welfare state so i'm i'm just saying like but now oh there's one more actually uh this guy is also on on parlor or he was on uh, under uh, you know he was on parlor uh this is what he posted there for my part i'll be slinging enough hot lead to stack you commies up like cordwood charming Charming fella. Really. Uh, but yeah, hey, look, you might just be thinking, okay, this guy's is is tough talk, he's bloviating, you know, whatever, right? Well, I don't know about that. Uh yes, while it is true that he did not do any violence at the Capitol, when he was arrested, federal agents did say he had at least two rifles, four shotguns, a pistol, and hundreds of rounds of ammunition in his possession. Uh but uh, uh, must certainly be for uh you know, just hunting, right? Right. Um, I don't know. For me, I, I would think that this man might be a little bit of a threat. Uh, just, just a little bit. And and knowing that he, of course, is an attorney. I mean, he's got a little bit of a little bit of knowledge of how that the whole justice system works. Uh, and do you think somebody like that might be smart enough to manipulate that system? I mean, you tell me. <laughs> you be the judge. Uh. And you might come up with something better than this judge, by the way. Uh, and, and, and again, this is his second time. The first judge looked at that and was like horrified, horrified. Uh, this was Judge, uh, U.S. Magistrate Judge Charles Weigel uh, had denied him bail as a result of this, saying that this guy is, is deeply problematic, the stuff that this man is saying. Uh, and so, you know, it's one of those things where it's like, for other safety, I definitely want to keep him in jail for his trial. Uh, and so, uh, now, you might be wondering, uh, since since he's getting out, what's his plan? That's just a fun fact, fun note here. Um, he admitted that he's going to go to Disney. No, no, he's not going to Disney. Uh, he's he's going to go to dinner. Quote, I know my friends are probably going to want to take me out tonight to buy me a steak and a glass of wine. Mm. Of course. He and his MAGA boys, his buddies, they're going to go out probably without masks because, you know, of course, and celebrate the fact that he did threaten to kill people and was at the Capitol for Donald Trump uh, and managed to get bail. I guess in some cases, right-wing privilege pays off. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like and share with your friends. You can subscribe and help out the channel by becoming a patron. It's patreon.com slash Jeff Waldorf. Or you can become a channel member as well by hitting the join button below.